Okay, so we're getting ready uh, for the counterattacks, and uh, again, this is a uh, training troll. This is training troll. Uh, this is training troll country uh, because they are going to have a hard time slowing down their counter to actual reaction type reactions. Uh, so, in other words, here comes the feint. I had to go for the feint. I had to complete my going for the feint before I can go with another attack, okay? I can't have a built-in whoop, whoop, like that. It just don't work that way. I'm going for this. Boom, here comes this knife at me. I got to react to that knife coming at me now, and now he's over here slashing me up. So you have to slow it down just a little bit to uh, avoid the training trolls uh, ruining a good drill, okay? So what we're going to do here is this one's going to come here. Then we're going to come with a straight slash here to counteract that knife. And then from there, you can go free-for-all. But you have to go for his fading hand. You have to go for his stab to the front. And then you can go free-for-all. Okay? Now, later on, we're going to get into free sparring. That's lessons eight and nine. Okay? Uh, how can I say this without screwing everything up? I really don't want your free sparring yet. Okay? I still want you working through these drills. Why? Because... A beginning student, or let me say a beginning student, you still want them, uh, you don't want them free sparring yet because of the fact that uh, he, he's going to pick up bad habits, okay? You start free sparring off of this drill, which is a great drill to free spar off of, but the problem is that training troll is going to come out on that early guy. He's not going to want to get beat. You know, he doesn't care about technique yet. He doesn't really care about his training partner yet because he doesn't know enough yet, okay? So that's why I'm not going to go, because he's going to start going like that. He's going to throw this 1 and a 2, because he knows you're going, excuse me, a 1 and a, uh, a 12, because he knows you're going that way, okay? And that's a problem, okay? He hasn't uh, matured enough as a, uh, as a student of knife fighting to realize that there's got to be some kind of reactionary thing. And the, and the real reactionary thing is going to be like this. You're going for that hand. Here comes that knife. You're going to have to come up to a 2. I mean, if we were going to trade it in, we could say, okay, you have to go here, you have to come all the way up to a two, and then you can attack. Okay, we could say that too. Uh, if you want to use that variable, because you're just an advanced mother training troll, and you know you want to do something different, okay? You can do that if you want. If you want to turn it into more of a free sparring thing because you, know, you want to see if it really works, well, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to come here, come all the way up to a two, I, excuse me, come up to a high ready, and then you can go with your attack. But I would rather you tried for his hand here, tried with an angle five, and now you can try to counter. That's why we're gonna start. So you understand what you're doing. You're coming with an angle one, and then an angle five. Yeah. You see, he's got problems there. So again, we're trying to work in a counter. I'm gonna have to, uh, address that counter and again how do I address it I just keep moving away from the blade and I keep poking at a stroke and I keep this hand over here from coming out a little tie up there. He didn't know where the blade was coming out of that and I didn't know where the blade was coming at me at. So I just stayed safe and I spun off. Up there, trap, reach up, trap. A little better trap that time. Actually, you got a catch out of it.
Sometimes you like run right by me. You don't have time to do everything. Well, that's for us. I'm right. You're pressing hard. You're moving right by me. Again. Now see, I'm busting into you. Don't you get that number? Yeah. So I'm busting into you to slow you down now. Thank you. <clears throat> and that might be all I get. That time I let you go by again. And that's all that was open for me. Okay, this time I want you to go into the uh, elbow spear swap off. Okay. I'm coming here and I'm coming here. You're doing the counters. Yeah, a little step really moves the guy out of the way, doesn't it? So now you can see where uh, a gap is being created. And it's hard for you to control that gap. Well, that's good drill then. Work on control of that gap. Nice, that's a jump back on me. And I should be turning at you after I throw that thrust, so. There you go, nice jump. See, I got to turn it. I give him that big telegraph. He's able to catch an arm right on my elbow. The blade's linking. That's my yeah. catch. Catch it right down here. The blade's going down. So now he's caught this angle, this uh, habit back up. We're bringing in some, uh, some quicker stuff. He's trying to move quicker, and all of a sudden, he's forgetting this part of his stroke. He's leaving the blade down here. I'm catching his blade here. That's not training control. That's... Uh, that's just your technique. Yeah. Stop. Come up. Hands out. A little inside. That helps you out more than anything. That gives you a little more time to get that blade up. Yeah. Oh, why the blade is come here like this? See how my blade starts coming up? And I'm really cutting from here. Because I'm coming up to a high ready. As I throw this hand out, I'm kind of coming up to my high ready here. Whereas you're letting it linger here. And that's causing you a little problem. Yeah. A little yeah. tight quarter. So I think this one has to be able to lay first. Yeah, because here's the hard part. I mean, I, I, don't want to, I don't want a knife fight with my knife down here. Right. At this kind of range, I definitely have to be here. This is where I have to be. So with this one moved down, I'm breaking this up. Yeah, it's just, but you want it to be a little delayed. I mean, you want this to be here. This is coming back in, then you want it to come up. So you don't want this knife to start. Again, we're getting back to that bicycle that we started in the beginning when we started this move. And remember, we said that this is delayed. This one is delayed. I mean, if I was on a bicycle, these would immediately start moving at the same time together. But that's not what we're going to do. This one's going to go out. This one's going to delay a little bit. So we're going to bring it up here. And because of the fact that we're doing an angle two, well, an angle two has to come up here and then come across, okay? So as this one's going out and coming here, this has to come this way. For some reason, Scotty is kind of, I think this is what's happening. He's bringing it up here. He's letting it go away from his body before he comes up. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly so you're kind of bringing it here, whereas you want to bring that up here and then push it out. See what I'm saying? That's exactly what I'm doing. So again, for those of you who, uh, you know, if you've been watching the video, you're a qualified instructor, you have a qualified instructor, now you're going through the course, and you're looking at our videos, and you're like, okay, here's the drill, okay, stop, cut, you know, let's go do the drill. And you don't watch us go all the way through the whole drill, you're missing little tidbits like this here, which are critical. And again, it's hard for me sometimes to remember everything I'm doing because I do it, you know, the right way. Whereas a student, you know, you, you really have to catch them in problems to really find out if he's uh, making a mistake. I mean, he may be making other mistakes, but they aren't uh, affecting the technique. And again, that's where I say you don't need perfect technique. You need what's efficient. Well, we're having efficiency problems right now. So we're looking at this and we're catching this. If you didn't go all the way through this video, you missed this efficiency little catch here. And so you're sitting there with your buddy, oh, this technique sucks. I can't do it, I keep getting my hand cut. Well, that's because you didn't watch how to fix that. That's what's good about doing it with a, a new student. You know, you often see uh, these videos where the instructor is uh, is instructing something on video, and it's uh, you know it's a new student. It's better with a new student because then that's going to show the flaws that need to be corrected. So 
where that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, by far, this here, and coming through with a step through, it really moves you, or even with a step and drag, it really causes a gap there, that now you have to learn to control that gap. So again, you have more stuff involved here. Maybe a step through is the best way to fill that gap. most cases, you know, if this guy's attacking you, I don't think, Scotty, you weren't attacking me real good. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you, I'm the one who's going to fill the gap. I'm going to help you fill that gap because you got my back. I got to turn and cover that, right? I got to uh, orient myself. I got to observe you and orient myself to you. So I'm going to be the one filling the gap. You can almost get into a, what's that shit, Stevens of Golf Studies? Aikido. Aikido. You can almost Aikido it and just let the guy run into your blade. And I'm being a bit of a training troll because I'm forgetting my thrust. There you go. Now you're right on top of me. You got a nice check there. It's keeping me from coming back at you. Yeah, he's got me checked off. I'm having a hard time moving towards him. About the only thing I really could do, again, would be a, uh, a spin the center line. That's Because you, you automatically want to go back. And now he doesn't even have to check you on the right side. He can check you here because if you're trying to go straight back, try to go straight back and then spin, you can't get back, so you can't spin. And I wouldn't spin that way. I'm talking about even spinning yeah. that way yeah. because you're wanting to go backwards first. So, you know, you can control that guy. You can control with a check even on the wrong side because he's leaned over. He wants to come up first and then pivot. Well, if you can't come up, then you don't really pivot, you know? I don't know if you realize what I'm saying. Yeah. But bend forward. So bend forward more, don't support yourself, put your knife out there like you stabbed. Now you're trying to come up before you turn towards me, right? So that's see how much that lag causes? Yeah. It causes a huge lag. Okay, ready? One more. Okay, so uh swap. Okay, now this time you're gonna go to a two. So you're gonna uh hit here, turn to a two and try to come on. talking so he's off the hood of loop there. <clears throat> so now you can see where the one before that I was kind of slow on my counter. It's kind of being nice that type of stuff. Uh, you don't have time to be nice. You gotta rush in, get that three in here, get that three in there, check this guy off and get out of there. You don't have time to play around. Now Scotty, of course, he saw that you know he was stabbed in the stomach and he was about to get hammered uh, in the neck uh, face area. He knew he was screwed. Uh, so sometimes I get a good reaction on Scott because he thinks I'm gonna hit him. So he goes like this and it gives me that little second I have of extra uh, time. Nothing wrong with that. That's where we're going to go to next, as a matter of fact. Don't think I don't have all this stuff thought in. You ready? I'm ready. Thank you. 
Two. Three sport. So you can see there we went to a, a free sport. Both of us got the fucking shit cut out of each other. And again, there's times to attack and times not to attack. Uh, both of us probably should have sat there and just waited to counter. Uh, but you know, for the drill, it's not real nice. We're having fun. We're trying to cut each other up. Scotty's coming along pretty good. He's got good reaction to uh, the attacks. He's getting the attack off. And uh, I think he was training trolling me a little bit there. Because he knew I was coming with the uh, the faint again. I think you were a little bit. So again, you see that time I went real fast with the counter. Sometimes I'm going fast with the counter, sometimes I'm not. In a real fight, you got to get this counter out immediately. That blade has to get going immediately. just getting on him so fast when he comes that two I mean when he comes that high ready he's basically done and that's how quick you want it to be okay now I'm gonna say this so we'll just do this one time you can do whatever you want after you do that first slash if I can yeah. <clears throat> see now he's holding that knife in a good spot my hands kind of come across that blade fortunately nothing's happening with that blade so I'm just running my hand across it here a little bit I'm going to pick up a little cut again. Rule number one, probably going to get cut. Probably going to get cut. Not you're going to get cut, probably. So he's just overwhelmed there. I mean, that's all there is to it. I've got him overwhelmed. There's nothing he really can do but go into that. Again, from there, you know, once you get to this, you want to take a big, you know, some kind of a spin the center line, get away from it. Okay, so swap. Again, I'm going to come to the high ready after the attack. See how I kept moving that time? That was a big one. Now, to get those counters in quick, wop, wop, you hit me before I even have a chance to get off of my uh, high ready. Okay? That's what you want right there. Before this guy get off his high ready, you want your combos done. There you go. And then you just back off. Yeah. Come back in with stance, see what's going on. Again, as soon as you get those cuts in, get your cuts in. If he hasn't reacted, keep cutting. If he's turning towards you, just step off. Spin the center line. Spin the center line. Get back at it. Again, you're going to catch on that guy's knife hand. And you're in a good spot. About four more. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one thing. Before the drill started, Scott asked me, uh, you want to put your arm pads on? And I said to him, I don't need arm pads. You need arm pads? And he's like, no, I was just checking for you. So that was kind of funny. But uh, 
So now we're out here without arm pads. This isn't like one of those other drills where it just no, pounds each other's form. Yeah. I mean, when you do get pounded, I did get pounded here one time. It's a pretty good pound, but it's not like when we were doing that uh, that linear defense where you're just pounding, pounding, pounding every time. I mean, here there's not a whole lot of anything going on. I mean, if there's anything going on, it's usually a catch. You know, you get the hand here and then you put a catch on it. But there's not really any, you know, like like this older radial smashes going on continuously. So again, you can see how quickly that this uh, can degrade into a, uh, a sparring situation. You know, that, that's good. Uh, it's bad. You know, it has, it has pros and cons, let's say. Again, the pros and cons are uh, sometimes you just get a little wild, which you saw when uh, we first started doing it, we just started getting wild. And you want to avoid that wildness, you know, you want to stay on a game plan and work that out. But uh, I thought I was going to be able to walk right in and chop Scotty up and Scotty proved me uh, that he has learned something in this course. And he was able to do a pretty good job of, uh, of countering my attack. Again, I still think he was uh, training trolling me a little bit because he certainly wasn't following for any of my, uh, any of my feints because I think he knew where I was going. And he just wanted to win the fight, you know, so that's, that's your problem. You got to watch out for that. And uh, again, though, you know, uh, what we're doing probably looks a lot more like a real fight than, again, the guy stepping back, doing this, or whatever. And uh, that's what we're really looking for, is to give you as much real fight experience you can get uh, before you get into a real knife fight. Hey, you're going to have to come up to a two. I mean, if we were going to trade it in, we could say, okay, you have to go here. You have to come all the way up to a two, and then you can attack. Okay, we can say that too. Uh, if you want to use that variable, because you're just an advanced mother training troll, and you know you want to do something different. Okay, you can do that if you want. If you want to turn it into more of a free sparring thing because you know you want to see if it really works. Well, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to come here, come all the way up to a two. I excuse me, come up to a high ready, and then you can go with your attack. But I would rather. You tried for his hand here, tried with an angle five, and now you can try to counter. That's why we're going to start. So you understand what you're doing? Uh, he, he's got to pick up bad habits. Okay. You start free sparring off of this drill, which is a great drill to free spar off of. But the problem is that training troll is going to come out on that early guy. He's not going to want to get beat. You know, he doesn't care about technique yet. He doesn't really care about his training partner yet because he doesn't know enough yet, okay? So that's why I'm not going to go because he's going to start going like that. He's going to throw this one and a two because he knows you're going, excuse me, a one and a, uh, a 12 because he knows you're going that way, okay? And that's the problem, okay? He hasn't uh, matured enough as a, uh, as a student of knife fighting to realize that there's got to be some kind of reactionary thing. And the, and the real reactionary thing is going to be like this. You're going for that hand. Here comes that knife. Okay, so we're getting ready uh, for the counterattacks. And uh, again, this is a uh, training troll. This is training troll. Uh, this is training troll country uh, because they are going to have a hard time slowing down their counter to actual reaction type reactions. Uh, so in other words, here comes the feint. I have to go for the feint. I have to complete my going for the feint before I can go with another attack, okay? I can't have a built-in whoop, whoop, like that. It just don't work that way. I'm going for this. Boom, here comes this knife at me. I got to react to that knife coming at me now, and now he's over here slashing me up. So you have to slow it down just a little bit to uh, avoid the training trolls uh, ruining a good drill, okay? So what we're going to do here is this one's going to come here. Then we're going to come with a straight slash here to counteract that knife. And then from there, you can go free-for-all. But you have to go for his fading hand. You have to go for his stab to the front. And then you can go free-for-all. Okay? Now, later on, we're going to get into free sparring. That's lessons eight and nine. Okay? Uh, 
how can I say this without screwing everything up? I really don't want your free sparring yet, okay? I still want you working through these drills. Why? Because a beginning student, or let me say a beginning student, you still want them, uh, you don't want them free sparring yet because of the fact that you're coming with an angle one and then an angle five. Yeah. You see, he's got problems there. So again, we're trying to work in a counter. I'm going to have to uh, address that counter. And again, how do I address it? I just keep moving away from the blade, and I keep poking at a stroke, and I keep this hand over here from coming out.